it's uh, Friday. We've got to the end of the, the week. Uh, it's the uh, 8th of September. Uh, what an interesting week we've had. Uh, we've got uh, Canadian jobs, the main uh, data today. Um, <clears throat> following that weak GDP uh, number for Canada last week and the Bank of Canada on uh, Wednesday, was it Wednesday or Tuesday, I can't remember, uh, keeping rates unchanged. Uh, the Canadian dollar has been pressured, particularly against the US dollar, uh, but uh, that's no surprise. Everyone's been pressured against the US dollar this week. Uh, so as usual, uh, any, um, any um, uh, assets you want me to have a look at in greater depth, um, please stick it in the question box. Please check, stick it in the chat box, and we'll uh, we'll have a look at it together. Uh, as I say, uh, it's a relatively quiet morning uh, so far. Let's, have, let's bring the charts up. Um, so let's start with the dollar index. Remains uh, very well bid. It's rolled over a tad today, but this is a daily time frame. You see uh, what a strong rally it's had since the uh, the 27th of July here, as it broke the uh, the 21 exponential moving average from a month my go-to moving average um uh, and we've just been uh, we've been uh, t uh, t uh, tracking higher ever since if i take this back to the weekly chart you can see we're into our eighth week it's a bit messy this one oh that's okay um <clears throat> into our eighth consecutive week higher and this week we've breached that key 105 level i don't know if you can see over here but this takes it all the way back to um Let's get that on there. Takes us all the way back here. This is uh, our current week. Uh, week begin the fourth of fourth uh, of September. Takes us all the way back to here. Um, uh, to um, uh, what's that? This uh, what's that? March, uh, March, February time, uh, earlier in the year. So uh, continuing to move higher. Uh, highs this year took us to one hundred five eighty five. So. Well, we get that high. Who knows? Uh, but currently, um, the dollar is very big uh, here on the weekly. Here on the daily and here, as we come down the time frames, the four hour chart's been uh, um, biased to the upside all month. And uh, our intraday daily chart here, um, we're sort of running out of steam a wee bit here. Uh, uh, we were up uh, Wednesday, we were up yesterday, and we're uh, sort of ticking, still ticking higher again today. 105 remains that key, 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 key uh, line in the sun. What's going on with my um, network connection here? And all sorts of noises going off in my ear. Hole. Okay, um, so that's dollar index to the upside. Um, so consequently, uh, all the other major crosses are on, uh, are weaker. Today's best perform actually is the uh, uh, the Kiwi, um, not necessarily against the dot. Well, it is here against the dollar, but against the other major uh, crosses. So Kiwi's best performer today, back over fifty nine uh, from a test of fifty eight sixty earlier in the week. So we had this like, triple bottom forming here and we've rallied a tad um, yesterday and even more so today. So we're back over dot 59, uh, 59, 50, 59, um, sort of this area through here, uh, 59, 35 zone uh, next to uh, uh, lie uh, at targets to the upside uh, for the Kiwi. Um, uh, euro, uh, consequently, is, uh, as we said, with the stronger dollar, this is euro dollar um, on the daily time frame. You see our uh, 200 day moving average has, breached, has been breached in September. We've been down ever since that big break. Uh, so 107, as we said yesterday and uh, many, many times, remains a key uh, level. We zoom this in on the daily time frame. So daily sort of zoomed in uh, to the back. This is going back to November 2021. Um, so our high for 2023 up here at 112.75, and you can see how significant the 107 level is. Last time we were down here uh, at the end of May, uh, beginning of June, we rallied very significantly to that new to that 2023 high. Uh, are we going to have a similar support at uh, 107? Um, well, possibly, uh, but who knows? Uh, don't count your chickens too early. But certainly, some buyers down here for the euro against the dollar. Uh, at 107. Uh, obviously, next week uh, we got the ECB. Uh, last time I looked, it was about a, a, uh, well, it's lots of to in and fro in up whether they won't they. Uh, about 30% or less than a 30% chance that they're actually going to hike uh, next week. But obviously, as we, we saw with the Bank of Canada and the and the RBA this week, it's all to do with their outlook and what the uh, the governors say. So what Mr. Guard says later next week. 
with regard to perhaps the direction of the euro dollar certainly obviously before that uh on uh, wednesday next week we've obviously got the one of the last big key data before the uh, fed meet uh the following week on the 20th 19th and the 20th uh, and that's cpi out of the us um uh next um next wednesday um so anyway uh, euro remains weak uh so far today we're up a tad but nothing really to get too excited about we're still rotating through the 107 level uh the 50 hour moving average is breached earlier uh but that's been given up when we're back under the 21 ema as well and but found support at 107 so buy is around at 107 so um uh just testing that key psychological level see what the uh the uh obviously the canadian data isn't necessarily isn't going to move the euro dollar uh but we'll see uh what the out what uh, the consequences of that are uh dollar yen 147.75 this is the the weekly on the yen you see again uh not um, consecutive weeks higher but we've had one two three four five six five uh five weeks higher out of the last six uh we continue to uh push to the upside sorry let's move that in i went down too far that's the weekly the daily continuing to push uh to the upside we're at 107 uh sorry 147.75 as i said and again as we saw we've got the weekly here this takes us it takes us all the way back into last year and back to november october um last year resume this up you can see it's actually into october um uh 2022 when we were last at 147.75 so um obviously that month we went through the what the hugely psychological 150 level for the yen uh before we saw some significant um <clears throat> see this was the way up <laughs> uh, uh before we saw some significant intervention from the the bank of japan that brought us back uh under the 140 level but uh, at the moment we'll continue to to move higher uh and uh, as i say don't necessarily bet against the dollar at the moment. Uh, we, we are continuing to, to track high at the big daily support. Now sits at 146 or just below 146 for dollar yen traders. So still biased to the upside. So it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a boring story, but the story is the same. It's the stronger dollar that's driving things. Sterling uh, under the hugely psychological 125 um, yesterday, the 200 day moving average comes right in here at 124.25 now on daily time frame. But as you can see, uh, it's been on, it's been short and it's been under its uh, 25, uh, 21 EMA uh, for all of August. From that one day we breached, but then, you know, this, uh, shorts were added again here and off we went uh, down uh, under 125, under 126. Uh, rejecting 127, uh, and the next big support comes in here at 120. Or 25. As far as today's concerned, again, sort of bias to the downside, playing with these hugely psychological levels. 125 is a massive uh, number for uh, cable traders. Uh, and again, we've been in to test it this morning uh, from, interestingly, our low yesterday, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, is the low for the week at the moment. Uh, we'll see where we finish the week. Uh, 124.45 for, for um, technical reason, uh, technical uh lines in the sand uh are low for the week um if we go up to the uh, the four hour you can see uh it's not only low for the week it's low for uh, um oh i said got the daily it's not only the low for the week but it's a low uh since the beginning of june and as you can see we we moved up quite nicely from this level here uh <clears throat> looks like that 200 day moving average is really pulling the uh, cable traders down Again, weak uh, PMIs uh, across the, the world this week, really. Uh, Australia, Japan, UK, Europe, um, services this time. Uh, it was manufacturing last week. Save the US, which is added to the bid on the dollar that perhaps the uh, Fed aren't finished with their rate hikes for 2023, um, 55% um, for a November or December hike um, currently. Uh, so cable down, uh, CAD, the uh, currency of the moment uh big shakeout today have we uh, i'm sure the data has come across it hasn't come across i've been chatting on and i missed the jobs data so uh looks like it's stronger day so let's have a look at the calendar um so um big old move on that number that's just come out let me just bring up the calendar sorry i uh what do i want i want um what's today um so unemployment um 
better than expected, 5.5% uh, from 5.6% was expected to go up. So it's remained the same, basically. Uh, but a big build in jobs, nearly uh, 40,000 compared to a decline, a hugely disappointing decline um, last month of July uh, of that negative uh, jobs uh jobs growth negative jobs growth, i decline uh it was expected to be fifteen thousand. it's much it's more than double that at forty thousand. so bounce back in uh canadian jobs as well that's obviously lifted uh finally i should say uh had some sort of respite for the canadian dollar against the us dollar it's been in a, a relentless rally to the upside obviously this is just uh, a reaction to that but we're still above 136 uh 136.75 was our high early in the week yesterday we moved higher again so I'm just going to put that in uh, while we're here. Uh, 136.93. So again, within a smidge of 137. Let me just put that in for my charts if you don't mind. Uh, I'll just sort these out. Yeah, that's a um, big thick black line. So have we uh, have we run our course given the uh, the data uh, out of Canada was uh, finally better than expected? And remember the, the the other thing that's happened this week. Uh, excuse me. Is the um, 3700 that the canadian dollar hasn't really benefited from this big rally we've seen in uh, in the oil prices brent crude was over um one um one uh, sorry 90 dollars a barrel this week wasn't it so um excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. um so um uh, you would expect the canadian dollar to have performed a wee bit better than it has uh, and again this might be uh, traders waiting for uh, this data to come out um uh, but also you know profit taking on the, the the this relentless rally we've had uh in the um in the us uh sorry in the us dollar against the canadian dollar up to this uh, within a smidge yesterday of the 137 level over the 136.75 level so we're down uh big down 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 candle today at the moment on that date so it's rolled over there we are a uh, huge uh, reaction, but uh, as far as uh, as um, um, top intraday trading is concerned, there may be some. Um, let's see how this pans out. We're what we're ten minutes into the move now. Let's put the uh, the five minute candle. So it's immediate uh, move lower, gaps lower the following, to, and we're still moving lower here. So if we go back to the say the fifteen minute, that's still a significant uh, breach uh, down. So. Maybe some buys uh, as low as 136. There'll certainly be some uh, buys down here at 136. See if uh, see what uh, what uh, comes of this move lower currently. But uh, say on the higher time frames, uh, it remains very big. This might be the end of the rally. Uh, but you know, don't, don't count it out. It's quite a significant. Can see how we finish the day for dollar CAD uh, to the uh, to reacted to that uh, very strong uh, news uh, for the. Um, Where's my, where's my calendar gone again? Um, uh, for uh, Canadian, the Canadian economy, uh, a good uh, um, build of. Um, what's gone? There we are. Um, uh, for, of uh, jobs, forty thousand uh, net change for the August number. Okay, so. Um, Put that down. Uh, so that's dollar CAD rallying. Uh, sorry, responding to that strong number. It's still bid on the daily, but uh, nice intraday moves. Um, see how we get to this. Uh, see if we look to get down to this one thirty six. Uh, the other, as I say, the uh, the Antipodean uh, currencies are doing a wee bit better. Kiwi in particular, Aussie itself uh, this week has been uh, under one under dot sixty four. We're back to test it currently today. We've been as low as uh, one thirty six. Uh, sorry, dot thirty six. 55 this is a daily uh, uh trade for the uh, australian dollar and continuing to mine so we're under 64 that channel it was in uh for most of the uh, second half of august uh 65 64 was be has been breached this week but interestingly look oh, we might be getting back into there so um we might be seeing some uptick uh for the kiwi now, again the rba warned about uh, you know the, the possible um uh, more intervention uh, but the Kiwi, uh, sorry, the Aussie still continue to decline, even though the RBA obviously left things as they were on Tuesday, but still will uh, obviously comments as all central bankers are at the moment about the prospect of the stickiness of inflation. So um, dot 64 
key for the key, uh, the Aussie here. Technically, uh, on an end of day basis, we'd like to see us back over the 21 EMA, which right sits there at that 64.50 zone. Uh, so quite a way to get back. Um, that was the disappointment of uh, earlier in the week. In anticipation of the RBI new lows posted, and we're bouncing a wee bit today. Uh, as we get to Friday in the end of the week, uh, we'll see again where that finishes. I say Kiwi, as you saw earlier, uh, best performer uh, today. Uh, something against the, uh, the weaker yen and sterling. Uh, so we're back over 59. It's performing, outperforming against the dollar as well. So the dollar's weakened a wee bit today. Uh, Kiwi uh, up. But again, if you look at the daily time frame, uh, it's, a, it's an up day in a downtrend. Uh, so again, another one that's posted new lows this week at 58.60. Dot 5860. Uh, but again, it wasn't an end of day close. It was doof, 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 and we bounced off it. So big down candle, doji candle, doji candle, and we're up today. So uh, see how that one finishes as well. So uh, uh, Kiwi outperforming uh, the dollar um, today. Stock markets uh, yesterday uh, were down again. This is the daily for the SP 500. Uh, crucially, uh, under the key 21 EMA earlier in the week. Yesterday we were down again. Let me just check the actual numbers for yesterday. They were, we were off uh, 14 points at 4451 uh, on the cash market. The futures here just gyrating around. Currently we're at 4456. Um, but this key fib decline here from uh, August high to low. Um, this the this rounding top we found just above the 61 uh, fib has sort of played out. So one, two, three, four, five days over, but it's rounding big up candle, big down, uh, sorry, less a big down candle. So it's still tick rolled over, uh, but the the you know the strength going up hasn't been replicated by the strength of the speed of the decline currently. Uh, so we'll see where we go. Uh, there may be some buys there, but uh, 4,500 has been uh, given up so far at the moment for the S&P 500. Uh, next big support at the psychological 4,400. It also happens to coincide with that 23.6 FIB level. Uh, but for FIB traders, we want to get back over the 50 and back over the 21 if we're going to go back to test 4,500. Uh, next test support level has already been tested yesterday down here at 4,440. Uh, on the S&P 500. Uh, the NASDAQ uh, sort of tinkering with its 21 EMA. Let me just go into that. Tinkering with its key uh, 21 level right on the close yesterday on this futures market. So uh, again, similar, you might expect a similar rollover pattern to the S&P 500, giving up the key, this key 15,500 level here on the, S &P, on the, the NASDAQ 100, not the broader NASDAQ, this is the NASDAQ 100. Um, but again, technically testing into the 21 EMA. Next big support in the land, line in the sand remains down here at 15,000. Uh, hugely uh, key week. Uh, the world's biggest company, both uh, on the NASDAQ, well, the world's biggest company, full stop. Uh, Apple uh, suffering very significantly uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday following uh, Wednesday's decline to five of uh, 3.58 percent. We lost 2.92 uh, percent yesterday. Uh, all on the news of the the tightening up of um, or the the ruling by the uh, Chinese government that uh, officials aren't allowed to use uh, Apple devices. Coincided with this uh, launch on uh, an, a, of a new chip and a new product by Huawei. Uh, so getting around U.S. sanctions quite well. A very uh, a significant chip with it from SMIC, the main uh, chip manufacturer that's in Huawei's uh, equipment, uh, technically reached a very significant level. It um, to, to something to do with nano uh, processing power, which I don't really know very much about. But it's a major step forward. They've gone from 14 to seven, um, which wasn't expected, and they've managed to have that breakthrough. So they've got this technological breakthrough. The Chinese that the West wasn't perhaps expecting it's in these new Huawei devices. Uh, and so it's sort of perhaps minimizing um, the demand or the, uh, the, the, the the kudos of the Apple phone in the Chinese market. And it's a hugely, hugely important market uh, for Apple. How Apple will react, we'll see. Uh, they've got their big uh, annual launch of products next Tuesday. Uh, the uh, much anticipated uh, on well depends what side of the of the argument you sit on the anticipated the quite anticipated uh, iPhone uh, 15 will be launched uh, some upgrades to other hardware uh, watches particularly no uh, Mac or uh, devices 
uh, being changed, uh, although they've come in for some uh, new launches this year, they've come in uh, very, very favorably in the Mac devices. Uh, and, uh, you know, the thing for me for Apple is, is the services sector. So um, uh, the services side of their business as well uh, continue to grow so wearables as well as uh, their soft services as well. So Apple very much under, uh, under pressure. I haven't got an Apple chart here on this workstation, but uh, um, 175 is a big support area or key area, 170, and then we could be down to one the next 150 level, having, been, having had a very, very strong year uh, for Apple stock. So that's obviously having a huge impact on the overall uh, stock markets, particularly the NASDAQ and the S&P. So it's added to the uh, pressure down here for the NASDAQ here. Uh, intraday, as far as the NASDAQ is concerned, um, let's assume this in. Um, uh, so there's our low uh, yesterday. Uh, we closed a bit higher, but we were down for the day. Uh, which, again, another one that's, as you can see, continued to uh, uh, trend to the downside. Um, currently, we're right on our 21-hour moving average at uh, to. Uh, 15 to 890 zone ahead of the open uh, in about uh, 40 minutes time. Um, the other big mover we've had this week in the, in the commodities sector is uh, is oil. Oil continues to hold at highs, and you see here this is the U.S. Uh, sorry, this is U.S. oil. Uh, so we're over the $85 um, level this week. Uh, we've been as high as 87. Um, uh, 30 some was it 50 or something yeah, it's around, around the 87 60 zone uh just shy uh, shy of 88 dollars uh but significantly above the obviously the 85 level and the key uh, 80 dollar barrel level uh inventories yesterday um the delayed inventories because of the bank holiday on monday were uh, better than expected so um <clears throat> we've got a, a bid on oil again today um back over $87. So, so let's put that line in there. So that's the key. It's not got to 88, but there's our 87 level, which is playing with the markets currently. So $87 uh, for US oil. Um, let me just put up the, the other commodity chart, actually bring up my commodity profile. The other one, the key Brent uh, benchmark um, here uh, this week uh, into this 90, uh, dollar level and say takes us all the way back here uh, to again October 2022 for oil markets this hot uh, this is the weekly chart uh, for Brent uh, the daily you can see um, continues to push to the upside uh, we got to $90 it's cooled it's consolidating a wee bit uh, the last three or four days around this $90 level but again it's one that remains very much very much bid, as you can see here from the, the signal line here on the MACD the, the parabolics are flipping uh, towards the end of um, towards the end of August and off we've run uh, when we were down here at around $84, uh, dollars, um, oil remains bid. Uh, other commodity marks, where I've, got, where I've got this chart up, uh, obviously everyone's favorite, uh, gold uh, has had a bit of a big tick up today. I'll bring you back the other chart in a minute, but this is the, uh, sorry, it's the one I meant to go the daily. Um, Morale looked like it was rolling on, but it's had a quite a big uptick today. We gapped back to the 1925 level. So uh, parabolic SAR here has flipped to the, this is the daily, it's flipped to the upside. So maybe showing some on this down leg, these three down legs we had. Uh, and the signal line here for the MACD, the, 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 the histograms have narrowed quite significantly or narrowed very significantly. We can't breach the zero line. Uh, we'll see if we do actually have an uptick on there. Um, and uh, the other one I wanted to show you here was silver. Um, let's zoom that. Oops. Silver so going to daily again. Another one that's rolled over uh, quite significantly. We're down here at uh, twenty-two ninety-seven. Uh, we started the month uh, looking like we were going to test uh, at twenty-five dollars again, uh, but we've rolled over uh, very significantly. Uh, and here for silver, unlike gold, the histogram here has uh, has um, uh, turned lower. The signal line's already breached the or had already breached the uh, the uh, zero line, so it was leading. It was running ahead of uh, gold, gold, uh, silver, and platinum were sort of in tandem, uh, but they've rolled over as well. Uh, obviously, Chinese uh, economy is a big, big uh, consumer of uh, silver products. A big, it's not only a precious precious metal, but more of an industrial metal as well. Silver, so. Uh, we're down 22.97, so the trend remains to the downside for September for silver. Platinum similarly um, followed much more like the uh, silver uh, 
uh, chart up to our high here, uh, close to a thousand uh, dollars, uh, but uh, it wasn't to be. Nineteen nine uh, ninety five was the top, and we've rolled over, and it's been another one that's continued to decline. Histogram flipped here, the signal line rolling over uh, to the downside. Uh, our uh, August low through here. I don't know if you trade platinum, but our August low here took us to under the nine hundred. Uh, level to 885 or 884. So, um, you know, that trend looks like that. Um, it's, well, it's been consecutively down as it was consecutively up. So, ha may have some time to run. Shines of signs of a bit of a pause. We had a doji candle yesterday. Uh, see what today's like. But before that, we'd had two strong um, down candles um, on that one. Let me just go back to the, um, the gold chart on my default setup. You'll see the gap up we had this morning. So this is the um, sorry, the daily chart still. Um, so a bit of a rounded top here at, at uh, 1950, a bit like uh, we saw on the, the, the indexes, the indices. Uh, down day here or uh, earlier in the week, uh, we touched under the 50 period moving average. The blue line is the 50 period moving average. Um, uh, 21 was breached uh, on uh, uh, Wednesday. Uh, we were up yesterday and we're currently up today. A bit of a spike on open. So eight. So this key level now in play again is the 1925 level, big round side, uh, again, round five number levels. Uh, but we haven't been able to get down to the next uh, key support level at the 1910 level for the bears. Uh, so we've rallied up rolled over we're legging down at the moment we've sort of had a leg down uh, and we may be looking to move up so there may be some pressure to the upside uh if we can uh, breach these key levels here at uh, 1925 on an end of day basis intraday uh the four hour has turned higher but still can't breach the 21 ema so it's still short you know spike spike uh, see where it where it goes from there uh, the one hour on the other hand um did Oops. Um, did breach back over this 21 EMA and then it breached the, uh, so it had a bit of a leg up this morning, uh, breaching the 50 hour moving average. But again, it's run out of steam as we've seen there at uh, 1925. So shorts in play here. It's jiggling about a bit though. It doesn't really want, look like it wants to go down. Sorry, it doesn't look like it wants to go higher with these doji candles, these highest. Uh, um, uh, um, wicks to the north, the shadows to the north, and this is a um, quite a significant uh, rejection of higher prices here in this current hour, which is just about to finish, which is interesting. So this might be um, a sign of more to come to the downside as we've given up half of that, half of that big rally this morning, uh, or it might be uh, this might be the low of the day. So see if you're trading this intraday. Let's let's have a look at this in a bit more detail. The 50-hour moving average sits there at 120. Um, 121, just under 121 at one uh, at 1920, um, But the, yeah, that's looking fairly bearish to me. Um, this is the daily trend line for what it's worth. <laughs> My drawing of trend lines, I don't hold too much to that. But yeah, look at uh, yeah some pressure to this uh, potentially. Uh, dollars perhaps kicked back a wee bit. So oil rolling over a wee bit um, today. Um, see what the 30 minutes probably already. Yeah, see, it breached here the 30 minute, and now the 30 minute chart as this as this candle completes at the top of the hour in the next couple of minutes is also under its 50 period moving average. As you see, yesterday it was under it a bit and it came back. So, um, yeah, that's uh, trending low for the last uh, five or six candles on that 30 minute chart. So, uh, interesting uh, position there ahead of the US Open up oh, and we're down again on the gold chart intraday. Um, that's the majors. Uh, there's nobody uh, asking any particular assets, but uh, let's just uh, go through the um, the other um, uh, uh, the other majors that we look at. So uh, the Australian dollar uh, remains uh, pressured. Uh, let's, uh, let's put this window up properly. This is the Australian dollar against its major crosses. So you see, you were on its daily time frame, so very much uh, down against the CAD, very much down against the Swissy franc here, Kiwi. Um, uh, Aussie Kiwi sort of rotating uh, through 108, uh, similarly to the Aussie uh, Yen uh, being uh, down during the summer, um, maybe getting, uh, having an okay day today, uh, 94, uh, um, 30, let's look at this a, bit, a wee bit more detail, but uh, 
uh, but somewhat directionless, but still buys the downside. You see, we've sort of been looping around this 50, 21 EMA with little direction. So it's up and it's down, it's up and it's down. Uh, um, uh, Aussie uh, up today currently uh, 94, at 94.30, uh, but very directionless from as a trend following trader. But you can see clearly uh, that the uh, trend line remains sort of set to the downside. Uh, we got some. Uh, um, sort of support through here at 90, uh, 92 or 93, um, but um, a breakout is what you'd want to want to see with a bit more oomph, lots of intraday movements. Um, but uh, uh, dollar, uh, sorry, Aussie yen, um, um, uh, uh, sort of two weak currencies. Uh, you know. How will the the, the 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 Bank of Japan start to support the yen? Well, it would be uh, in uh, in perhaps in this pair, uh, but uh, a breach of ninety three would take us lower. Uh, a breach of ninety five would take us higher. Well, ninety five is out of this trend line, so we need to get up here. But uh, yeah, Aussie remains relatively uh, weak against its peers. Um, let's have a look. Uh, sterling uh, pound crosses. Again, another pair that another uh, currency that's uh, uh, quite under pressure. Let's go through these. Uh, so again, we looked at this on the other chart uh, here with my uh, my triple exponential moving average. You know, the trend just remains to the downside against the the dollar against uh, uh, the dollar against the yen. We've topped out uh, sterling yen topped out, but again, another one a bit like the Aussie here against the yen, uh, um, directionless. Uh, for a while here on these higher time frames, um, 186, uh, 186 we got to, and the, with the flat um, uh, AMA, this red line here is the adaptive moving average. So the flatness of the moving average uh, suggests how much uh, the strength of the trend. There isn't one; it's because it's flat. It's flat. So again, another one waiting for some direction. So we might be, you know, either a, a, a clear direction for the Bank of England or clear direction for the Bank of Canada, uh, the Bank of Japan, uh, before we see some sort of break. Of this sort of consolidated move, but we are, you know, overall, as you can see, uh, you know, the yen remains uh, weak against most of its competitors. Pound CAD, um, uh, again, sort of biased a wee bit to the upside, and that looks like that's uh, rolling over now as we get into September. We're down again, flattening out of the of the of this uh, particular moving average, um, and it's uh, you know, it's been some uh, moves lower since this cross, this last cross here retraced. Uh, your stop loss will be up here still now. Uh, that continues to move uh, lower. Uh, let's have a quick look at Euro Euro Pand on this setup. Uh, again, currency pair that tends to trade within ranges, and a lot of people get really bored with trading Euro Pand. That's uh, one I keep a, a personal eye on, uh, given where I am at the moment. But the 85, 86 channel um, uh, it's more or less held. We had some spikes to uh, sort of testing 87 uh, at the beginning of the summer. Uh, but we were all the way up at uh, 90, uh, 93, weren't we, not that long ago. Um, 90s up here uh, back at the beginning of the year. But it's, again, it's been drifting lower. Um, that's the weakness in the euro rather than strength in, in sterling. Um, uh, but uh, see what uh, the ECB come up with um, next week, uh, whether we do indeed see another hike from them uh, on Wednesday um, next week. Um, let's have a look. Uh, where are we going? Uh, let's go back to our default chart. See, if, uh, see what's happened with that uh, CAD uh, reaction to the uh, the stronger jobs and number. While well, it continued, uh, this is the one hour. So we had that big down. Let's go back to that 15 minute, uh, and uh, we've bounced. We have bounced, but we didn't get to 130, uh, 136 quite. Um, um, my last buy position we got to here, <laughs> down here on this setup, 136.05. Uh, we've bounced a wee bit, uh, but uh, it's nothing compared to the uh, the the the, the down uh, the down candles we've had. So some buyers down here um, at uh, 106.10 uh, by the looks of things uh, today. Oh, is that what is? Yeah, it's around about yeah 136.9. That's 10. Yeah, so some buyers. Uh, initially um, here, um, uh, following that good 
jobs number. But remember, last week was last month for the jobs for the Canadians uh, was particularly uh, particularly weak. So that's come back, uh, but it's not really affecting the. Uh, the higher time frame, we still remain north of 136. As you've seen, we just bounced off that. Um, so that uptrend currently, obviously today's not complete. Not, well, even if today finished that candle finish like that, that uptrend is still very much in play. Although, as you can see from the candles, I mean, let's assume that the day's far from over. The candle finishes like this. This is a, its biggest negative move uh, for a long time, isn't it? Its biggest negative day since uh, middle of July. So uh, you know, maybe the first sign of uh, weakness. Who knows? Um, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the the one thirty seven we didn't quite get to, um, uh, but we'll see see what uh, uh, happens as we move forward. So uh, there's uh, there's nobody around. So I'm gonna have to have a word with my uh, my marketing friends. Might tell why nobody's turning up here uh, to these live uh, sessions. Uh, maybe me. Who knows? Uh, so let's just um, let me just check the calendar again. I don't think it's uh, we've still got it's still way before the um, the open today. Let's go back. Uh, what else have we got today? Well, we've got more speech. We had lots of uh, Fed speak yesterday. Remember the, uh, the the speakers of the Fed, Powell and his uh, his vice chairs and uh, other members of the the voters and the non voters on the Fed. Uh, they'll be going shortly into their lockdown before their meeting of the 19th, 20th of September. So uh, today it's uh, Mr. Barr um, speaking uh, just ahead of the wholesale's inventory um, uh, in Philadelphia. What's he saying? It's a moderated discussion at the Federal Reserve of Philadelphia, their annual fintech conference. That's what they were at. Uh, they were talking at yesterday, the um, other participants. So um uh, that's um, uh, actually happening that right now, isn't it? You, sh you should speak uh, in the last, uh, start speaking in the last couple of minutes. Uh, the rest of the day, uh, consumer inventory, wholesale numbers from the US and some consumer credit numbers. They're not really uh, major market moving events. Um, but to say the major event of the day, let's put this back up, was the, has been uh, the uh, Canadian unemployment rate coming down by, um, or remaining at 5.5%, uh, not ticking up as was expected. But the main news really was this net change in employment, a significant uh, 40,000 gain uh, for the August number compared to this decline that they had in July. So a bounce back, I was expected, but not as strong as that. So it gets, I mean, it's a very, a very volatile number, this uh, Canadian net change in employment. Uh, but 40,000 is a good, good number. And that's uh, given a lift to the Canadian uh, dollar. Let's just have a look at the uh, other dollar CAD crosses um, against the yen. I suppose I guess it would have moved uh, a bit more significantly. So this is uh, CAD Swiss. Uh, just put it on the hour. Yeah, there we go. Strong uh, uptick uh, as the um, oh, I think it's had a strong day, hasn't it? Uh, here on the hourly chart uh, into its upper half of the bottom round. And off we go. Uh, 65.46. Uh, again, looks a bit bit overstretched, doesn't it? Um, um, the uh, awesome oscillator here has been long all day, ticked, uh, gone over the zero line as well as you might expect on that big strong candle, but uh, maybe looking um, run out of steam at 65.50, some shorts probably getting placed at this 65.50 level uh, for uh, CAD Swiss. Uh, CAD Yen, uh, with the week uh, uh, Yen, we're back to where we were yesterday and early in the week uh, at the uh, 108.30 level. Uh, so again, testing highs and less of a retrace here for the CAD uh, against the yen. Remember, the yen's uh, one of the weakest currencies today. Um, so again, another one that's run quite nicely. Uh, the um, awesome oscillator ticking high this morning. We breached uh, the midline of the Bollinger Band this morning as well. So that was, uh, it's been long uh, from here this morning and it's followed through quite nicely. So we've gone from uh, uh, what would have been an entry here at 107.68. Uh, we're up to 108.30, so a nice 60 odd pips there on the uh, CAD yen. Uh, as, uh, as you say, the, week, the yen remains a week, and the CAD's got this lift uh, from those jobs numbers um, from their uh, labor force survey. Um, so um, there we go. Remember the uh, 
the next week, uh, let me just bring in the calendar again, we'll look at next week. Uh, the ongoing uh, G20 uh, meetings uh, start today, they run over the weekend, let me put next week for you. These are just the high impact events, remember, I'll highlight two major highlights next week, I'm sure you're all aware, uh, traders, we've got uh, CPI uh, from the US on Wednesday, headline um, numbers everybody uh, will be attracted to, uh, this 4.7%. Um, number so watch that on Wednesday uh, and before that on Tuesday we got jobs out of the UK and then the other big event of the week uh, of the uh, of the week is the uh, ECB as we said uh, no change expected uh, but as I said earlier there's about well less than a 30% chance that they will actually raise rates so uh, all to play for there as well so uh, plenty of opportunities plenty of risks as ever um ppi data from the us as well retail sales so big big day thursday uh um uh, we finish uh with the important michigan consumer sentiment uh the uh, university of uh, uh chicago um sentiment consumer sentiment index uh no change expected there on friday next week but uh yeah uh, let's see what wednesday and thursday bring us next week so uh, traders, uh, take care, trade carefully as ever, uh, and uh, we'll, oops, where's my chart's gone? We'll, um, we'll see you all next week. Uh, let's check if there's anybody, I don't suppose there is, because there hasn't been anybody here yet, so um, let's see if there's anybody, where's my, my, my no, nobody here. Uh, yeah, Let's see what's going on. Never mind. So we've been here 40 minutes. Uh, I'll wrap it up. I'll leave you with the uh, the, the um, dollar CAD as it cools from um, the big rally we've had, but um, uh, on the main data of the day. Let's have a look at the, what's the hourly chart. So uh, a big uh, breach down from a test of. Uh, uh, 137 yesterday, 136.96 we got to, um, it had been sort of tentatively short earlier, um, probably stopped out if you'd gone traded that, that spike there to that previous high, 136.70, uh, but certainly uh, since then uh, moved lower. Uh, we've tested it into 136.10, uh, we can get to the 136 zone itself, so um, Perhaps the dollar's coming back again there. So uh, some buyers found at 136.10 um, to the upside. Uh, this is our previous high. Remember that 136.36 we were talking about uh, for a few um, a few weeks bef uh, before we breached breached that level. So that's been a previous high. That was our uh, next high, uh, the 136.75, and that's our current high on this rally to the upside, 136.96 just shy of 137. So I'll leave you. Have a safe weekend, everyone. Stay safe. And uh, may the pips be with you. May the trend be with you. And uh, we'll see you all next week. All the best. Bye-bye.